Welcome back to my channel. everybody um, I hope you're all doing all right today I'm just uh, on my way to pick up a few things for the pizza tonight and I will also swing by and pick up one or two packages of those sticky tiles and see you know precisely how many I need if I like the way they look and so I um, that's about all that's on the agenda for today. And um, so stick around and hopefully I will be able to find all my ingredients, including a pen so I can write down the ingredients that I forgot to put on my list back at home. So um, I'll see you later. I'm home now and I wanted to uh, let you know that I spent a good deal amount of money close to $50 for the pizza haul and so um, I also did another tiny haul which I'm not going to show you I'm just going to focus on the pizza haul and let me switch the view and I'll show you what I got so I managed to go for some smaller peppers this time and um because i know that they're quite heavy for the pizza and so i wanted to make sure i get them a little bit smaller this time and try that out so i got the green ones and the red ones and they're sweet and then i got more mushrooms yes i'm gonna turn into a mushroom one of these days and um you know i'm so out of black pepper if you can see that um, so I decided to pick up more I like to grind my own because um, the one that's already ground gets all over the place whenever I try to transfer it so anyway I got some more pepper black pepper 
I got four tomatoes. Uh, I bought some fresh oregano, pepperoni. <laughs> yes, I got pepperoni and some sliced olives. And I am also very low on onions. And so, yeah, at mid-March is usually when I do begin to run out of supplies quite a bit. Um, and so I got the cheese and I found this basil um, drenched oil. Um, I really haven't ever tried this and I'm counting on the fact that because it's extra virgin, I do love extra virgin olive oil and I'm, you know, I'm almost out of it. So I figured I would pick this up. Uh, maybe I'll drizzle some over the crust and over the pizza. We'll have to see. And so that is the entire haul and it cost me $46. Wow. <laughs> So I managed to go for some smaller peppers this time and um, because I know that they're quite heavy for the pizza and so I wanted to make sure I get them a little bit smaller this time and try that out. So I got the green ones and the red ones and they're sweet. And then I got more mushrooms. Yes, I'm going to turn into a mushroom one of these days. And um you know, I'm so out of black pepper, if you can see that. Um, so I decided to pick up more. I like to grind my own because um, the one that's already ground gets all over the place whenever I try to transfer it. So anyway, I got some more pepper, black pepper. I got four tomatoes. Uh, I bought some fresh oregano. Pepperoni, <laughs> yes, I got pepperoni, and some sliced olives, and I am also very low on onions, and so, yeah, at mid-March is usually when I do begin to run out of supplies quite a bit, um, and so I got the cheese, and I found this basil um, drenched oil, um, I really haven't ever tried this and I'm counting on the fact that because it's extra virgin, I do love extra virgin olive oil and I'm, you know, I'm almost out of it. So I figured I would pick this up. Uh, maybe I'll drizzle some over the crust and over the pizza. We'll have to see. And so that is the entire haul and it cost me $46. Wow. <laughs>
take any chances. I did pick up a couple, one for the bathroom shower, one for the kitchen. I took two packages and they were gonna amount to over $40. And I figured, no, um, I, it doesn't feel right to me. So I, I canceled the purchase and I came home. It's very frustrating guys. And this is why I haven't done anything yet. This is more or less the typical um, direction in which my home improvement projects usually um, go into, or should I say, dive into. <laughs> um, it's, um, it's not worth the hassle. I, I don't know what to do because um, it, it, it's just, it's not... I can't stand to look at the same thing anymore. You know what I mean? A little bit of a difference would make a wonderful improvement for me. Um, I, I think, you know, I just have to keep checking. I'll go back to the original Home Depot where I saw the other ones, the other tiles, and I will try and, you know, um, I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to buy half supplies and then not um, have enough for the other half. You know what I mean? Um, I, you know why I'm saying this is because when I did my kitchens, my kitchen and my bathrooms abroad, that's what happened. We would go to the store, order it. Thank you very much. And then when it was time for the men to come and install it, oh, well, there weren't any more, so we can't come. Um, and that was Home Depot. So <laughs> um, it's not Home Depot's fault. They don't know how many uh, tiles I need or packages. Uh, but um, it's not a very easy way to do it, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know what to do. Hi everybody. Um, so it's been a pretty disappointing day for me, um, shopping-wise and decorating-wise. Um, it's um, very discouraging to go into a store and find the complete opposite of what you found in the exact same store uh, about 24 hours earlier. So, you know, um, it's, uh, this is why I never decorate. <laughs> it's not easy uh, picking and choosing and deciding because every time I decide on something, it backfires. And usually it's the case that the store does not supply enough of it. And so I'm stuck. I'm stuck waiting <laughs> until something else comes along and then the same thing happens. I'm not very good at this. I mean, once I have the material and the merchandise, I'm okay. I'm good to go. But uh, I think there's something going on in the city regarding... Um, merchandise and, and supplies. It's um, chaos finding what you need. Anyway, um, enough of that. So um, last night we wrapped up the Maddie McCann case. And um, although it is far from being solved, um, no one has ever been able to find anything concrete as to the whereabouts of Maddie McCann. And it, it's, you know, going over what I went over yesterday, it's very um, easy and very popular to believe that uh, the parents had something to do with the disappearance of their daughter. However, um, it, it, isn't, it isn't as though we can just go back, uh, flip a book, and, and go through the details and um, see where everything went wrong, because there are no details. There are no records. 
Nobody knows what happened. And so, um, you know, uh, the, the McCanns did contribute just a, a bit to the disappearance of their daughter when they left their children in the uh, apartment suite. And so you can argue it that way, but the bottom line is we still don't know what happened. We don't know who is to blame. Um, the, there were specks of blood found in the bedroom where the toddlers slept, and there was a... Um, a shoe mark near the door, near the back sliding door, and it is thought to have um, contained Madeline's blood on it. Um, whose shoe print it was, I don't know. But so we have to um, think, were, was that planted there? Uh, did something happen? drastic happened to Maddie, some uh, horrific accident, um, or was it someone who um, managed to get Maddie's blood under his shoe? I, I don't understand, guys. I, I really don't um, understand how a child can vanish into thin air. And so when you look at the facts that way, and you they, they, this case is incredible because it is almost as though it shapeshifts. And it's very much like the Amanda Knox case or the Meredith Kircher case, I should say. And not that they are similar um, details, but it's the same mystery that could never be solved. And it so happens that they both happened in the same year, 2007. And so what I'm saying is there, it's not illogical or, or outlandish to assume that the McCanns may have had something to do with the disappearance of their daughter. I don't think so. I don't believe so. But that's just me. Um, it depends on what you look at, um, on what you really, you know, what you really think of the evidence that was presented, and um, what you think of the McCanns and their relationship with Madeline. It, it's all up in the air. Um, nobody knows anything for sure, and so I. I this is a good reason, also. Uh, why so many investigators are, are still working on this case. And um, I, I'm not saying that we should wait for the day that we find the McCann's guilty. No, I, what I'm saying is we need to find out one way or another what happened to her. Um, regardless of who is involved, we need to get to the truth. It, it's unbelievable um, that we do have such a thing as remote viewing. Remember when I told you about my earthquake dream where I dreamt of my first boyfriend being stuck in an earthquake, just as it was actually happening, um, <laughs> miles and miles and thousands of miles away in another country, um, I, I remotely viewed it, and I viewed it as it occurred. I'm not psychic, but there is such a thing as remote viewing, and I wish that we knew more about this, and I wish that more people would come forward with any information that they might have about remote viewing and how to look back into the past. Um, I, I believe that probably... There is footage somewhere. I mean, it was a holiday resort. There has to be footage somewhere of something suspicious, despite it being 10 o'clock at night. There has to be something. Um, it, 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 it's incredible that no evidence exists one way or another. Um, 
this is so baffling. And it's upsetting because not only is it baffling, but there are so many articles online that contradict what Kate says in her book. For instance, um, the McCanns uh, went out partying and left the children all alone with the doors all open. They couldn't be bothered locking them. Well, they didn't lock from the, uh, uh, from the outside. They didn't lock. And so, um, you know, we do hear about the keys that were um, circulating. We did hear about um, Kate McCann's uh, discovery that children were molested there before their arrival and after. And we heard about the keys that went missing, apartments that got robbed. We heard about it, all of it, but we still haven't found Madeline. And so what I'm saying, guys, and I really sense this, why are there so many theories out there? I don't understand it. Why so many theories and so many false sightings? Why? Something here is being covered up and I don't know what. Well, I know it has to do with Maddie, but I don't know exactly what, why, by whom. It, it, it definitely is very, very odd. And so I can understand why many people regard the McCanns as highly suspicious. And indeed, the whole case itself is highly suspicious. It makes us uh, believe that Maddie maybe had an accident, or maybe the McCanns traveled to Portugal a week earlier than they actually said they did. And you know, tried to pawn her off to a, 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 a perverted photographer or something like that. Um, I don't understand why so many of these bizarre theories and bits and pieces of story have come out all over the internet and still no Madeline. It, it's not, it, it can't be. It can't be. There's something here that is not real. And I, I really don't know what, what else to look at because, um, you know, we could go and investigate the keys and that and this, but it won't, still won't lead us to Maddie. Um, I, I did see one sighting online uh, after the disappearance of Maddie, that could have been her and the suspect that is now in jail. But that's all. It's not much to go on. And uh, that it does look real. And it was just a few days after Maddie went missing. And so that's the only thing, really, that I, I found online. And... Um, it's so incredible. Um, I really, it's kept me up so many nights. <laughs> and uh, year after year, you know, uh, every time the anniversary of her disappearance gets close, uh, the whole thing crops up all over again. And we're left to ourselves to sort through all those confusing details. And I don't know what to make of it anymore. Um, it does not seem to me that the McCanns were involved at the extent that many people seem to think, uh, simply because it already went to the, high, the Portuguese court and they already decided that the McCanns, there was not enough evidence. And so if the court already found that and ruled that, We're not going to find it now, um, all these years later. It, it has to come from a different source, logically. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's very baffling to me. 
And um, while we're on this subject, I thought I would bring up the case of um, Julia Wendell again, because um, I found out something very interesting that I didn't know before, and that is that Dr. Johansson, her lawyer um, and spokesperson, is also um, a gifted psychic. I did not know that. Um, it's the first that I've ever heard. So, I, guys, can this be on the up and up? Um, in any case, Julia Wendell and Dr. Johansson are now in Cal uh, United States, and I believe that they may have gone to L.A. Um, and the, the, the whole thing is that Julia is still persisting. She couldn't get very far with the Polish courts. So she's persisting in the American courts uh, or the American judicial system um, to get her mother's DNA extracted. Wow. Have you ever heard of a mother refusing to... Ex I, I just can't believe that this is happening. I can understand the mother being angry, but this is taking it to extreme limits. Um, why doesn't the woman give in and give her daughter the DNA test that she really wants. I, I don't think that Julia can move forward without that. Um, I know that the McCanns, they are interested, the courts over there are interested in her claims that she may be Maddie McCann. And I think regardless of uh, the DNA refusal, the results, um, what the McCanns said, I think it's her only shot, her only shot. It's her only chance to find out who she really is. She needs to go by that supposition that she could be Maddie McCann. And I can see why now. I can see why, because it's her only hope. Um, based on that supposition, she can get DNA testing done. And her mother won't do it. Uh, there must be some way to get some sort of DNA from her mom. Uh, I don't know. It's a it's such a baffling case that one too. But um, I, it's incredible that uh, these two cases came to lockheads. They're both very weird, aren't they? Uh, one much weirder than the other, for sure. Maddie McCann's case, it really, um, it's scary because nobody knows what happened, uh, for sure. And uh, I, I am rooting for Scotland Yard because I know that they have the resources to go after suspects and to... Um, provide us with details that we can't get on our own. And so I think if there's any institution that can find out the truth about what happened to Maddie McCann, it would be Scotland Yard, as well as the Portuguese police, because they have all the reports, they have all the interviews and the statements. But guys, there's something here that doesn't jive when you look at the whole picture, it doesn't make sense to me, not not that clearly. Um, for instance, uh, Kate's uh, statement that, you know, the window could be open from the outside. You can't find that in any article online. They all say the exact opposite. So who is it? What is the truth? We don't know because it's not that the, the um, evidence is unclear or this or that or, or you know, 
questionable. It's either black or white, and there's no in between. That's that's what this case has really been all about. And um, same with Amanda Knox and Meredith Kircher. But um, in this case, where a little girl has gone missing, we have to find out what happened to her. Did she actually go missing? I, I don't know what to believe. I really don't. I, I do think that the McCanns are innocent, but still, I want to know what happened. <laughs> so, guys, um, this is the end of the vlog for me. Um, I, I have my pizza. I'm going to show it to you again. And um, I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Coming along with me and doing my shopping and um, looking for those tiles again, um, that was a waste of time. But, uh, you know, I, I still hope that you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. Oh, by the way, one more thing. I think that I have a couple more vitamins to talk about. So we'll probably pick that up on, um, say, oh, maybe tomorrow or the next evening. So we have a couple more to go over. And then I think that we will start reviewing some of these fad diets that are um, floating around <laughs> out there and um, creating a sensation. I'll, I'll have a look at a few of them and tell you what I think. And so um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and coming along with me. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.